Welcome back guys to Trails of Cold Steel, where last episode after defeating the Great Sharkadal in the underground waterway, Group A got to see daylight once more after finding another secret way out to the Ost District. Having coffee in Mackie's house to take a break, he told us more about his past and his reason for his prior noble hatred. After that, we took a call from Governor Regnitz, finding out our day is yet to end, as Phantom Thief B stole the Crimson Tiara, now leading us on a merry dance around the capital as we tried to work out his riddles. Oh god. Just got it. I mean, it only took me a minute. The round table of the gauntlet that used to support the city. The gauntlet is the bracer emblem. It's not there. It's not the round table. So it must be upstairs. So he's actually been in our house? He's been in our house. The gauntlet is supported in the east of the city. The gauntlet is the symbol of the Bracer Guild, isn't it? It's on their emblem too. Yeah, the once and east parts mentioned in their notes seem important as well. This building was once a branch of the guild, and while the capital once had two such branches, this is the easternmost branch. This would be the round table. Ha, huh, here it is. Pan of Thief Beast card. I can't believe he even trespassed into our lodgings. Indeed, though from the look of things, it doesn't seem like he touched anything else. Still, not a pleasant thought. Yeah, it's kind of creepy knowing he was here. Especially considering we don't know what he's actually after. Anyway, let's see what the next card says. The fourth key is on the bottom of the white burden of the steel bird perched at the water's edge. So we're going to the port. Sure enough, it's another riddle. And a rather challenging one at that. Most likely the water's edge being there. There is other areas where there is water present. After all. But not where I can see a white bird, I don't think. So let's go to the port first of all. See how that takes us. See where that takes us. You know what? First of all, I'm guessing the thing will end in Vanquish Street, by the way. But uh, I think this is a good time for us as well to buy the final upgrades for gear. Sometimes a round table is just a round table. Well, we, we got that one just because, like, when I went on the map, of course... There were several sections before we went on. One of them said Guild Branch or Bracer Branch. And as soon as I saw Bracer, I went, oh, that's where it is. That's the gauntlet. I mean, we use it on every thumbnail for Trails in the Sky, after all, that emblem. I should know it off by heart. Only took a minute. I'm happy. All right, let's get the red jacket for you then, I think. Or we could get the Leopard Print jacket for a bit of strength now. Let's get the red jacket. And that's one for you. Now about shoes. Let's get the red shoes then for... I don't know what's better actually. So the other shoes around the corner. Are better defensively. How much do they cost? Let's find out. Let's find out. Already bought all kinds of weaponry. Oh, we can actually upgrade something as well at this point. All right, military spikes, aren't they? Spike shoes with disruptive pattern used by the military. Do you know what? Let's go for the pure defense with that. So that's one. You've already got one as well. And they cost a lot less. Oh no, wait a second. We buy one at a time, don't we? Don't forget to buy one at a time. And that leaves us with still 13k in cash. And I feel like everyone's been defensively equipped, weaponly equipped. Nice. Just gone shoe shopping, see you in four hours. But you can't drag me out clothes shopping. Probably tell. Alright, let's customise... I think I should customize the Ruby Force because it gives that ATS boost. That's really quite nice. So let's do that. So Elliot's got his super weapon. Let's just check out the uh, Imperial Chronicle for a second. So that I can see if anything's progressed with that missing persons case. 
Yeah, my name's Kerrigan. I place now. Nope, nothing's progressed. No hidden anything yet. But I'm going to be checking out this street quite intensely for that. Right, travel to another district. We're going to the port. Shoes are good for the soul, yes. So when it says a metal eagle, or some kind of eagle, does it mean like somewhere over there? I mean, this is down by the water, so this is kind of where I expect it to be, but it might not. So what was the clue again? This is just the first place to check when water's going on. On the back of the white burden of the steel bird perched at the water's edge, the white burden is in something it's carrying. So it's over there. Is this it? Yeah. The steel bird perched at the water's edge. At least I didn't call it casket. The last clue seems like it might be referring to the crane here in Heimdall Porch. And that would make it white burn in these containers. Can't see a card attached to any of them though. The clue did say it would be on the bottom. Hmm, perhaps we should discuss this with whoever's in charge here and ask him to check the containers for us. That'd be Port Chief Damberto. We met earlier today, so let's see if he's willing to help us. But look on the bottom again. Group A explained their situation to Port Chief Damberto, who have reached to check all the white containers for them. And just as they predicted, a card was found affixed to the bottom of one of the containers. How the devil did that get stuck to the bottom of that? He wouldn't have been able to attach it without lifting the container, and that would have been using the crane. But when did he do it? I don't know if even noticed anything suspicious. Well, he is supposed to be a master of disguise, right? Maybe disguise himself as one of the workers here? I can only guess as to how we might have done it, but it's definitely not something a normal person could pull off. Last side, what does the card say? Oh yeah, let's see. The final key is also hidden near the water's edge. The crimson crown you seek sleeps within a black arc nestled in the steel car that marches with the minutes. Okay, so the tram. I imagine. Crimson crown you seek. Sleeps within a black arc. Nestled in a steel car the march of the minutes. Near the water. This was just as obtuse as the others. Though if it's also hidden near the water's edge, from all indications, I'd say the next one is here in Heimdall Port too. It says final key in Crimson Crown too, so at least says that. Yeah, looks like this is the last one. So somewhere around here, like really specifically. No, I'm gonna talk to you again, actually. Hey, look at who it is! Thanks for taking care of that monster force. Now we can finally focus on our work without wondering what that thing will happen next. Oh, well, nothing gained there. So, what's the clue again? Crimson Crown, black art, nestled in steel car that marches around based on time. I mean, first of all, the black car is the interesting point. Aha! Aha! It was the tram! I thought it was! The steel car. My guess is that the last clue refers to the oval tram. That seems like the best fit. What about marching with the minutes? The tram schedule, of course, arriving and departing at preset times. I'm no port is the starting and ending point for all the trams in the city. So you could say the tram here is waiting for its appointed time. That makes sense, in a weird way. I guess this is the place then. Let's get the driver's permission to have a look inside. Excuse me, do you think you could do us a favour? Sure, what do you need? We can explain the situation to the tram driver and ask permission to search inside the tram. The infamous Phantom Thief B had something in this tram car? Yes, we believe that to be the case. Wow, really? Well, I get where you're coming from. Go on and look around as much as you want. That's your cooperation. I've got to actually look. Well, in the black cask, there we go. I'm so glad that my brain instantly went first to tram. Because if I was looking for a black cask around Dot, first of all, I would have never got it. And yes, the tram driver is driving with the, uh, I guess he is on rails, but still, with the <laughs> paying attentionness to not notice a phantom thief putting that in this tram. Yes. That's not good. You don't want that kind of person driving around the streets. It looks like this must be the black arc mentioned on the card. The phantom thief appears to have taken no pains to hide it. Isn't it kind of weird that the driver didn't notice it? Maybe phantom thief B left it here not too long ago. I wouldn't be so sure. Anyway, let's have a look inside. 
Inside the black case rests a tiara embedded with dazzling carnelians. Yep, this is it. So this is the storied crimson tiara. It has such a fiery glow. Wow, so this thing's worth 100 million mirror, huh? I'm almost afraid to handle it. Yeah, we've got to be really careful about getting this back to the jeweler safely. As we found, the crimson tiara. If you want to do it safely, we maybe should have like taken it in that case. It was cushioned. So the tiara really was in there, huh? Now I'm wondering if the last passenger who stepped off the tram was Phantom Thief B himself. I don't remember there being any unusual passengers on board, though. I think someone's unusual. I see. So you have no idea who Phantom Thief B could have been, then? To have done so much and yet left no trace of his presence. He must truly be a master at covering his tracks. I'll say. But hey, at least we were able to get the tiara back. I suppose that's good enough. What's wrong, Reen? Well, why are you staring at me like that? I think it's time we put an end to this little charade. Don't you? Baron Blue Blanc? Or should I call you Phantom Thief B? What? Hmm. <laughs> this, this savory taste is why the unripe fruit is the most delectable of all. Wait, aren't you the Baron we met earlier? But that mask... That's the mask of Phantom Thief B! Allow me to introduce myself once again. I am Phantom Thief Blue Blanc, otherwise known simply as Phantom Thief B. Baron Blue Blanc is but one of the many roles I have assumed during my pursuits. Incidentally, might I ask when you first discovered my true identity? It didn't really take much discovering. You went out of your way to show up in the Crystal Garden after all. Now, maybe it's just me, but I find it hard to believe you were seriously trying to hide your identity to begin with. Your disguises? Nothing short of perfect, I have to admit. But with all the work you've put into this, I suspected you might come check on us near the end of your little game. Ha <laughs> ha! I see! Excellent deductive reasoning! Simply splendid! But why would you do something like this? Why go to all the trouble? Ah, does that interest you? Must there be a motive? Nah. Now that we know your identity, there's nothing more to discuss. Theft is a crime. Indeed. A crime we will not allow to go unpunished. Ah, oh, what Spirited youths you are! What? How did he do that? <laughs> Just a little trick I like to keep up my sleeve. Regardless, you have provided me with plenty of sport and more than enough entertainment for one day. I'll be watching your future achievements with keen interest. Ladies and gentlemen, until we meet again, I bid you adieu. He disappeared again. <laughs> That's quite a little trick. He might still be nearby. Let's search the area. Green and the others scoured the area for Fan of Thief B. Try as they might, they found no trace of him. After reporting the details of the incident to City Hall, they trek back to the jewelers to return the tiara. I can't believe that you were able to recover the tiara safely! How can I ever thank you? I almost get the impression with the reason he stole it in the first place. Maybe we should apologize to you. Oh no, not at all. And if B's conquests have always seemed rather capricious, I imagine that he just decided to use all of you as a convenient excuse for his latest escapade. Given how fixated on us he seemed, I don't think that's at all likely. Well, better not say anything. Indeed, the last thing we want is to cause more confusion here. I'm afraid I can't offer you much, but please take these, the token of my thanks. I, I do like 500 Sepith, but could you give me an evergreen? Whatever that is in the back. 
This is a lot of Sepith. Are you sure it's all right to give us that much? It almost feels like more than we deserve. Well, this is a jewelry boutique after all. We have more Sepith lying around than we know what to do with. <laughs> well, that does make sense. Thank you very much. Think nothing of it. It's the least I could do to you after all you've done for us. And so the quest to burglate the jewelers has been completed. Okay, job done. I'd prefer an evergreen. I'm guessing that wasn't his only elemental Sepith, not 500 Sepith Mirror 2. I'd expect him to be rich and give me loads of cash, right? <laughs> Isn't that how it works in games? Okay, we've completed that quest now, which leaves us with this day done if. if this day is done. Oh, I st yeah, I just remembered something by looking at the AP values of those things. I've remembered the fact that, of course, we got several attachments. Kitty strap we got, a strap with figurine of kitty attached, part of a set. But the more important one we got is the Gladiator belt, isn't it? Auto CP up. The Moe belt CP automatically recovers in battles. Strength 5, defense 5, all no CP. Why not put that on then, maybe? Who would be good to be auto CPing? Green doesn't need it, does he? It prevents delay. So feet always goes. Should I put it on you? Give you loads of CP. Why not? Alright, job done. We've solved the Phantom BB case. Thank you so much for all you've done for us today. We implementing even stricter security protocols so that what happens today will never happen again. You know, just don't open the case. Thank Adios. Looks like we'll be able to keep our jobs after all. There's no time to relax. I'm gonna have to be extra careful to make sure no one lays a finger on it again. I'd like to point out though, we found Phantom Thief stealing stuff. I don't think he's actually failed at stealing anything that I've encountered yet. <laughs> so therefore, in that sense, like, security surely isn't to blame. You know? I don't know. Like, no one's managed to foil him in that sense, by the feel of it. I'm glad to see the tiara came back safely after all. It glimmers so beautifully, though. I can see why the thief wanted it. That's to the point I know currently, of course. You guys got it back. Amazing. You're all students, right? What kind of school do you go Do you go to where you learn how to bust up thieves? Investigative school 101. This is a bit of a weird class. An abnormal school. Let's put it that way. Phew. That was quite exhausting. Phantom Thief B was an even more unpleasant fellow than I expected. Annoying to think his smug face was watching us the whole time. Yeah, though his name is pretty well known around here. He was plainly suspicious even when we first met him, but I didn't suspect he'd prove this much of a troublemaker. So I'm wrong, Reen. I was just thinking. He must be incredibly skilled. He disguised himself so well that he was virtually unrecognisable, not to mention all those other things he did. If this were martial arts we were talking about, he'd definitely be at master level. I can't disagree. True. Why was someone like that trying to mess with us? He specifically asked for group A2. Though, I can't imagine why. Hold on. Is it my father again? This is class 7 group A, Reed Schwartz was speaking. Hello, hello. Sounds like you've been keeping yourself busy. I know it's you, Instructor Sarah. Ooh, got in one. How'd you guess? Don't tell me. Is it your smouldering love for your tragically beautifully teacher? Ooh. I have uh, many feelings about you, but love would be stretching him. Anyway, you don't usually call us where we're on a field study. Is something wrong? Actually, there's something I'd like Group A to go. Or well, somewhere I'd like Group A to go. When you've finished up what you have to do for your field study, I'd like you to head over to the Sanct District. Okay, let's see. That's where Heimdall Cathedral and the embassies are, right? I think Elise's Academy is somewhere around there too. Yeah, that's the place. I want all of you assembled outside St. Australia's Girls School at 5 o'clock. Group B will be there too. What? Don't worry, I've already informed the governor about this, so go ahead and enjoy yourselves. Anyway, have fun! Toodles! Hey, hold on a- Ah! What's wrong now? It sounds like the instructor is being her usual irresponsible self again. Pretty much. I don't know what she's thinking. Marina explains to the rest of the team that they were to assemble at St. Australia's Girls' School by 5 o'clock. Oh, I know where that is. That Girls' Academy for Nobles. Isn't that the one your sister attends? Hmm, I have a few acquaintances who attend there myself, but I can't imagine why she'd have us all meet there. Girls' Academy, huh? I'm kind of curious. I'm sure she has her reasons. Weird ones, probably. 
it's almost evening, so we should finish up here and start heading over. The best way to get to the Psychic District is by tram, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter where we catch the tram from, it'll pass through there. I almost dread to think what we'll have to do when we get there, though. The Psychic District has been added to the list of locations selectable from any of the capital's tram stops. Now, question is, should I be exploring? It still looks about the same time of day again, still. The best tester is you. So the conversation dialogues haven't changed again still. Long ago this district was exclusive for nobles. As you can see it's far from the case nowadays. The commoners now outnumber the nobles living here. Which I suppose makes sense when you consider the ratio of commoners to nobles in the city as a whole. Okay. Maybe there's not hidden stuff around the place, he says. I mean, there's still a lot of time in this day. Phantom Thief Anton is a very unsuccessful thief of hearts. That's Phantom Thief, eh, is it? We're on to B. He's way more better at what he does. Alright, I have to take the tram by the look of it. Well, everyone's ready to go. Everyone's good. Do I just bite the biscuit? Go straight there? Oh, I took the tram to bank. I should have fast traveled to bank. Way more better, yeah. Double emphasizing. It's great. Perfect English. If there's a Phantom Thief Zero, I'm gonna TP someone's house. Yes. When you wanna cram in a bit more, but you've already done one and two, quick, put in the zero, it'll be fine. No one will question that as weird. Okay, I wanted to go here just to check again if anything has progressed here, but I'm betting everything is still completely the same. So, unless I've missed a hidden quest, I'm pretty sure I've talked to mostly everyone. I guess with all the people in uh, Heimdall as well, it'd be really hard to constantly keep changing everyone's dialogue, right? Let's go to the Sank District. I'm going. I don't have time to do anything else once we arrive at the Sank District. Should we get going? No. Of course, the main story to advance. Let's go. I'm slightly surprised. We haven't. No, we do it. We have found a hidden quest, haven't we? No, the hat quest was. Was that a hidden? No, it wasn't. Try to remember if we've actually found one yet here in Heimdall. Can't remember now. Found a book. Found a recipe. Have you found two recipes? Just one recipe. Oh god, they're waiting for us right at the tram? That's a bit weird. <gasps> Boys! <laughs> Girls' school ways, right? They'd be interested in lore too. They were wearing the same uniform as Reen's sister. Yeah, they must go to St. Australia too. So, the famous St. Australia Girls' School is around here, huh? It's supposed to be a combined middle and high school exclusively for the young ladies of the nobility. Yeah, this is one part of the capital that the masses have no reason to visit. Although, I can at least support the school's commitment to fostering chastity and rejecting materialism. You seem to know an awful lot about a fancy girl's school. No, no I don't. This is all just common knowledge. Anyway, let's go and wait by the front gate. Yeah, those were the instructor's orders. I'm feeling kind of nervous, actually. Why would you? To men, this academy must seem clad in the mysterious, impenetrable aura of feminine nobility. They might get the cooties! They go past the barrier. The men barrier. It's weird girls' school and boys' schools, isn't it? I don't know if any of you have been to, like, a single gender school. I, I have I was wondering... Did you not want to come here, Laura? 
my father did recommend it to me, but they offered no classes in the martial arts. That alone was reason enough to look elsewhere. <laughs> I can totally understand that. Though I get the feeling Laura would cause a real uproar if she went to a school for genteel young ladies. Yeah, I can picture the chaos now. Oh? I have a number of acquaintances who attend there, and from all I hear, it does seem to be a wonderful school. I've heard that even Princess Alfin herself is a student there. I've heard that too. Princess who? You've seriously never heard of her? I know you're not from Erebonia, but even still... <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised if plenty of Erebonians didn't know who she is. Princess Alfin is the daughter of our reigning emperor, His Majesty Emperor Yujit. She's supposed to be as sweet as an angel and popular with everyone. Is that so? <laughs> Actually, I believe she's the same age as Fee. I've had the opportunity to meet her once before. She truly is as charming as the rumors suggest. I figured as much. I've seen photographs of her plenty of times in magazines, though I've never had the opportunity to meet her. Sounds like she's in the same school year as Elise, come to think of it. She has a twin brother, too, Prince Cedric. He's the crown prince of Erebonia. Oh, right. I think I've seen a picture of the prince in a magazine before. Dark blonde hair, like Eusis's brother, right? Oh, I think you're thinking of Prince Oliver. He's Cedric and Alfin's older brother. Why isn't he the crown prince, then? I've heard the reason is that his mother was a commoner. It seems like a stupid reason to deny him the right of succession, but... That's how nobles do things. I feel like I've been hearing his name a lot lately. He made a big splash when he came back from the Burl aboard that airship. Uh, you know the one, right? Ah, you must be referring to his return aboard the Arcel, after the crisis in the Burl was put to rest. Yeah, I remember seeing that. It really made a big impact. I'd never seen an airship that looked so white and elegant before. I believe my father went to welcome the prince back in his capacity as Imperial Governor, too. And, yeah, now that you mention it, that does seem to be when I started hearing his name around a lot more. Oh, you're all here already! Ah, you made it! <laughs> it's good to see you all again. You're a bunch of early birds, aren't you? Well, we just about finished up everything we had to do when we got the call to meet here. Were you able to finish up everything on your end, too? <laughs> As if we'd leave any loose ends. If not for our unfamiliarity with the city, we would have been finished this morning. Ugh, every time. Looks like getting these two to kiss and make up will be an uphill battle. <laughs> well, some say that when someone gets under your skin, it means you really care about what they think. Wait, did you two...? <laughs> I figured the girls would be the first to notice. Of course. I, um... I apologize for any worry I've caused you. We're fine now. Really? That's great! <laughs> it sure is. Maybe after this field study is over, we can get together and spend the night talking in one of our rooms. Sounds good. <laughs> the thought of a Class 7 pajama party makes me a little embarrassed. That's girls for you. <laughs> Girls and sleepovers go together like jam and toast, huh? I want a pajama party. Come on, let me go. That must be Heimdall Cathedral's bell. It has a solemn, stately sound, wouldn't you say? It sounds so different from how it does in the Aust District. Though that makes sense considering the distance. That bell ringing must mean it's five o'clock, which means it's almost the time we were supposed to meet here. Reen? Elise, what are you doing here? Wait, I guess this is your school, so where else would you be? Um, yes. I see all of your classmates are with you too. <laughs> it's only been a week since we saw you, hasn't it? <laughs> well, we were told to meet here. Wait a minute. Are you the ones? The nine guests I was told to expect at five o'clock sharp? Well, there are nine of us in class seven. 
Wait, what? Then that would mean... You're the one we were told wanted us to come here? Actually, I suspect that would be a friend of mine. Why does she always have to be such a mischief maker? I swear. She could have at least given me a little warning that you were coming. Um, Elise? Anyway, where are my manners? Welcome to St. Astraya Girls' School. I hope you'll enjoy your visit. Right this way. See, I told you that's the reaction. I don't think I've seen that uniform before. You think that uh, uniform's before the military academy? I can even see what he said. My brother studied there when he was younger. Oh, is that the military academy Emperor Dracul's founded? I've heard they allow commoners to run there too. Oh my, isn't that Lady Laura? She always looks so gallant. Oh, do you think she's transferring here? Guys would be popular. Isn't that blonde boy Eustace, Joe Gabriel's son? Do you think that boy's a foreigner? He's so tall. Oh, that redhead is so cute. Silverhead girl looks like she needs a hug. The blonde girl seems so cultured. Which family do you think she's from? That girl with the glasses is such an amazing figure. If I had kids like that, I'd be Emmy all hemp. Girls in Heimdall, would you know? Uh, I can feel their stairs boring holes in my head. <laughs> Pay them no mind. <laughs> we certainly do seem to be the stars of the show today. <laughs> Laura's as popular as ever. I can't say that being admired doesn't feel nice, but... Please don't be too hard on them. We don't have many opportunities to meet people from outside the school. You think that boy in the front is a commoner? I I'm not sure, but either way, he looks so handsome. How do you think they know Elise? Actually, you're right. This is kind of uncomfortable. Are they all the same age as you, Elise? I don't know, and I don't care. Did Machius get left out? Poor Machius. What's in here? It looks like an indoor garden. This is the Academy's Rose Garden. The person who called you here is waiting inside. Who did call us here anyway? Whoever they are, they must have considerable social standing. Your Highness, I brought the guests. Thank you. Please show them in. Oh. No way. Hey, Elise, is that... You don't need to ask when you already know. Now, if you'll follow me. <gasps> I... I knew it! Ladies and gentlemen of Class 7, my name is Alfin, Alfin Rice Arner. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. to discuss with everyone? Please, go right ahead. Ah, <sighs> well, that aside. It's been a long time since I last saw both of you, Yusus and Laura. I'm glad to see you're both well. Uh, likewise, Your Highness. <laughs> You've become even more fetching since we last met. Aw, thank you. I was rather hoping that you'd decide to enroll in Sanctus Dryad too. But it seems you chose to attend Thor's after all. 
Well, I've committed myself to following the way of the sword, and Thor's gives me a place to hone my skills. I apologize for not being able to live up to your expectations. Ah, <sighs> first I lost Angelica to Thor's, then you too. Perhaps I should just transfer there next year myself. Y your Highness. <laughs> Got you to look. Well, she seems lively. She seems far more easygoing than I was expecting. I've heard plenty about her, but none of that prepared me for meeting her in person. So, this is what it's like to be in the presence of royalty. It's actually rather overwhelming. I can see why people always compare her to an angel. <laughs> me too. Please don't worry about me. Well, I still have much to learn before I feel like I deserve my status among the nobility. I've been blessed with wonderful friends, and I'm enjoying life here at the Academy. Well, she does seem to have at least one wonderful friend. Kind of an understatement when that friend happens to be Princess Elfin. <laughs> I'm particularly happy to finally be able to meet you, Reen Schwarzer. Elise has told me so much about you. Your Highness! Um, I'm honored that you'd say so. Elise always mentions in her letters what a great friend she has. As her brother, I wanted to thank you for that. Reen? Oh, it's so refreshing. You're every bit the person Elise says you are. Perhaps even more so. Huh? Actually, I have a teensy-weensy favor to ask. Do you think I could join Elise in thinking of you as my dear brother as well? Wh what y Your Highness! You see, Elise has spoken of you so often that in my heart, you've already come to feel like family. And now that I've had the opportunity to meet you, I fear I simply can't suppress these feelings any longer. I have two brothers already, of course, so I'm sure it won't take long to adjust. I... I couldn't possibly. I mean... That's enough, your highness. Aw, oh, don't be so stingy. Surely it wouldn't hurt to share him with me a little. Anyway, that aside, the reason I called you here today was not to talk with me. There is someone else who would like to meet you. Why? It's not like we're famous. Who do you mean? Hey, isn't that... A guitar? No, a lute? <laughs> oh, it seems he's arrived! Oh! <laughs> well, I apologize for keeping you waiting. It's a pleasure to see you again. <laughs> and you as well, young lady. Well, I trust everyone here has been making themselves comfortable. Who's this guy? I'm not sure, though I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. I serve as a music instructor in the hallowed halls of this fine academic institution. In truth, I am ever on the hunt for that elusive mayfly we call love. But that might raise eyebrows at a girls' school. But whose pulse would not quicken wandering into this untainted cloister of dew-eyed maidens? Ah, oh, the romance. Uh, could he be... <clears throat> Ow! I think that's quite enough. Any more of that and our guests may start edging toward the exit. Ah, oh, I can always count on you to never miss a beat, my dear sister. Oh, wait. So this is... Wow. Indeed. Tis I, Oliver Rice Arner. Also known by some unscrupulous individuals as the Debaucherous Prince. I also serve as Thor's Military Academy's Ornamental Chairman of the Board. It's a pleasure to finally meet you, 
ladies and gentlemen of Class 7. I have to admit, I was surprised to learn that you're the chairman of the board of directors, your highness. I'd heard that the chairman was a member of the imperial family, but still. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Who would expect the infamous prodigal son to chair a committee at a prestigious academy like Thor's? I suppose it's not surprising they'd rather keep it hushed up, though. It wouldn't exactly be great for the school's image. Surprisingly forthright coming from you. Is it really true, though? I mean, that you were the one responsible for establishing Class 7, Your Highness? Indeed, I was. You see, it's always been a tradition that a member of the Imperial family serves as chairman of the board. At first, I wore the title and name only, but I had a change of heart after my vacation in Liberal two years ago. You were in Liberal back then? That would put your visit during the incident that occurred there, correct? Right. All I've done since I returned to Erebonia has been inspired by my experience during the crisis in Liberal. As a result, fruitless though they may prove to be, I've set a number of plans in motion. One of which is to bring the winds of change to Thor's military academy. A gust of fresh air, if you will. Winds of change, huh? I can only assume you're referring to our class? Then the one who decided to throw both commoners and nobles into the same class was... Yes, the idea was mine. Although the selected students also had to have a high aptitude with the Arcus units too. I think I'm finally starting to understand the reasoning behind Class 7. And why we're being sent all over Erebonia on these field studies. To show us firsthand and give us cause to consider the conflict between the two factions. That is the purpose behind our field studies. Is it not, Your Highness? That is one of the reasons, yes. However, my foremost intention was to show you that during your lives, you will encounter many obstacles and conflicts. Not just between factions, but between the capital and the provinces, tradition and technology, even between nations. In these turbulent times, I thought that this would provide the hands-on education today's promising youths need. We need up-and-comers who can think and act independently to face tomorrow's challenges head-on. That makes sense. Wow, that's quite a plan. I can't help but feel a little unsure whether we can live up to such high expectations. Hearing your explanation has, at the very least, cleared up many of the doubts I've had up to this point. Class 7 does seem like an ideal environment to expand one's outlook on life. I feel like going through everything we have so far has brought us closer to doing exactly that. Yep. Marvelous. I'm so pleased to hear it. Just listening to you makes me feel even more certain that establishing Class 7 was the right decision. Especially since while the idea itself was mine, I have no real say in how the classes run day to day. Even so, I still hope to meet all of you at least once, if only to tell you all this. That was when Alfin stepped in and offered to set up this little meeting. I see. <laughs> well, I could hardly refuse such a sincere request from my brother. But it also presented me a fine chance to finally meet Elise's beloved brother, as I've always wanted to. Your Highness! <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to tell us all of this, Your Highness. I feel like now that I know, I want to live up to the promise you saw in Class 7. Thing is, am I right in assuming that Class 7 doesn't exist just to fulfill your progressive ideal? What are you... Oh? The board has its chairman, of course, but three directors besides. My older brother Rufus, Imperial Governor Karl Regnitz, and Irina Reinford of the Reinford Group. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it, 
They do seem to have certain expectations for us. <laughs> Precisely. As I mentioned, I no longer have anything to do with how Class 7 is run. That authority lies with the directors. As you're keenly aware, Rufus and Governor Regnitz sit on opposite sides of the factional divide. And while Chairman Arena is mostly involved with Class 7's technology, like the Arcus, her intentions are a mystery to me. And it's those three who decide where you'll travel for your field studies. Is that right? When you put it that way, it does make it seem like some kind of bargaining is taking place behind the scenes. It was one of the conditions they gave in exchange for allowing Class 7 to be established. I'll admit, I hesitated to allow it, but I decided to place my hopes in you. We believed then, as we still do, that one day, you all will be a great light that can push back the darkness of this country. <laughs> well, I suppose when I put it that way, it sounds positively heroic. But that's just me. Don't feel too pressured by it. Your students, first and foremost. Reach out and grab that fragrant rose of school life. Join a club. Eat cheap food with your friends at midnight. Fall in love. We live but once. Make your youth count. <laughs> you know, it's weird, but hearing you say that kind of takes a load off my mind. By the way, just earlier you said that we believed the Class 7 would be a great light. Is there someone else involved with Thors who shares your vision for our class, Your Highness? There is. Principal Van Dyke. I once attended Thors myself and studied under him. He gave my proposal to establish Class 7 his full backing. I see. He's been particularly considerate toward us ever since we arrived at the Academy. While he has no direct control over the running of the Academy, he does preside over the board meetings. And above all, he's the one who assembled an excellent team to give you first-rate training. An excellent team, you say? Are you referring to Instructor Sarah? <laughs> well, she's certainly one of them. Still, coaxing her away from her former line of work certainly played a large part in giving Class 7 a great foundation. She is, after all, one of the strongest people in the Empire, and her experience makes her a natural field leader. Wait, what? Instructor Sarah? One of the strongest people in Erebonia? Exactly what experience might you be referring to? <laughs> I've even heard rumors of her daring exploits myself. She was known as the Purple Lightning. Doesn't that sound exciting? Wait. Purple Lightning? I knew it! If you two have heard of it, it must be a household name among martial artists. That's right. Though I've just heard it in passing. Ah, that young ace of the Erebonian Bracer Guild, and one of the Empire's most famous bracers. She has a history full of brave feats and dangerous deeds. She was even the youngest bracer to achieve A-rank status. Back then, she was known as the Purple Lightning. Now, you know her simply as your homeroom teacher. And so we move on. Stopping after that, a lot of information dumped from Prince Oliver there. With his lovely loot being played. But he had to change his costume for dinner, you know. You can't get it down your white, gotta get it down your red when you, when you mess up, when you drop your fork. Don't know why that's why I took out of that. But Class 7 learns of their inception proper. That they are some kind of also political tool in a weird way. We'll see where this leads, as they're the light that's supposed to cleanse the darkness from Erebonia. So let's continue on. You say it's going to return to the screen. Whoops. <laughs> Thanks for seeing us out. I never would have guessed you were friends with Princess Alphen of all people. Hmm. <sighs> I wish I knew how much of what she said was genuine. Hey, Elise. Thank you for taking the time to come here today. Take care on your way back to your lodgings. We will. Thank you. Thanks for showing us around. <laughs> Good night. Good night, everyone. What? 
<sighs> Don't worry. <laughs> I can kind of understand where she's coming from. <laughs> that anyone could have guessed that Her Highness would extend such a bold invitation to you. I'm not sure how that's my fault. Something else happened. Ah yes, I almost forgot. Reen, I have a small favour I'd like to ask of you. Of me? Y your Highness? Oh, you're going to ask him? <laughs> but of course. You see, tomorrow I'll be attending a garden party sponsored by the local government for the start of the festival. Or rather, Machis' father invited me to attend. Yes, I seem to recall hearing that myself. That's the one at the Crystal Garden in Made Apart, right? Indeed. Anyway, let's not waltz around the matter. I was rather hoping that you would join me as my dance partner, Reen. Does that mean... Do you think Your Highness knows the old saying, a dance today, a wedding tomorrow? I'm sure that's fully in the realm of tabloid speculation. Still, there's no denying that many will interpret it that way. Whoa, 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 whoa! H hold on a minute. I, I, I don't think I can... I mean, it would be an honour, but it's like too great of an honour for someone like me. <laughs> oh, not at all. Your father may be a baron, but the Swartzers have long had deep ties with the Imperial family. I apologize if it comes across as rude, but inviting you would likely create less opposition than if I were to invite you, sis. I see. Well, I can't deny that. You need to apologize. I find your choice rather fascinating, actually. You, sis, you're not helping. Anyway, I really don't think I'm the man you want. Sometimes I can barely keep from tripping over my own feet. Is that so? Elise once told me that she asked you to help her practice the finer points of ballroom dancing. In fact, she says you're an excellent dancer. You step lightly and very gracefully. Is that not true, Reem? I... I... well... I understand. It was rude of me to trouble you with a petition like this on such a short notice. And besides, I don't suppose you would have much interest in dancing with a little girl like me. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean, Your Highness. That's my sister, alright. She really knows how to twist the knife. Y Your Highness, please. You too, Prince Oliver. Looks like they're having fun. I had no idea the Imperial family was such a lively and cheerful bunch. I get the feeling they aren't all like this. Oh, I see now. How could it not have crossed my mind? Perhaps the truth is that you already have your heart set on someone else? Or is there someone you're already courting? <laughs> That's a lot of girls interested. Haha. <laughs> well, do you? I'm possibly dying to know which maiden has conquered the battlefield of your heart. Wait, I don't... I mean... Yikes, how am I going to get out of this one? I'm not sure how to turn her down gently. <laughs> Very well, I shall relent this time. Huh? Ah. However, next year I'll be 16, just like your sister. That's when I'll be making my debut into high society. So, I'd be very happy if you'd give my invitation some thought. Well, aren't you the lucky one? Her Highness really seems to have taken a liking to you. You really ought to have accepted her invitation. It might have led to something truly unexpected in the future. Nah, I doubt it. It seemed like she just took an interest in me because I'm her friend's brother. She didn't seem all that serious about it, so I figured she was just trying to tease the two of us. Can't deny it seemed that way. But I got the impression that wasn't all that was going on there. You weren't the only one feeling nervous the whole time. Prince Oliver was an even more... Unusual person that I'd heard. <laughs> no doubt about that. He seemed entertaining to be around. To think that he's the one who made Class 7 possible. He seemed easy going, but hearing him talk about our class made what we're doing feel even more important. And besides, he gave us plenty of other useful info. Yeah, including the fact that the Board of Directors seems to have their own agenda for us. I have no idea what they're planning, but their motives seem incredibly suspicious. Agreed. Hearing about the instructor's background kind of threw me for a loop too. It, I wouldn't have imagined she'd used to be a bracer. Maybe because you don't really see them around anymore to begin with. A rank is more or less the highest you can be too. I assume you already knew about a history fee? Yep, the guild was every Jaeger Corp's main competition after all. Probably even ran into her in a few times during operations. R really? Unbelievable. <laughs> I'd almost forgotten about those good old days.
Instructor? How long have you been there? So, looks like you finally found out about my work history, huh? I guess that kind of tarnishes my ravishing adult charm a bit, then. I hate to break it to you, but you didn't have any to begin with. Shh. Did you hear an old maid sighing? What was that? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Captain Claire! This is quite the unusual combination. Let me be the first to assure you that this wasn't my idea. But the governor's asked me to tell you that tomorrow's field study is being put on hold. Instead, you get the exciting opportunity to help this lady and her goons with their evil schemes. Huh? What evil schemes? Uh, Sarah, could you maybe not try to put them off entirely before I've even had a chance to explain? Actually, there is a matter I'd like all of you to help us with. I've discussed this with the governor and he decided that this would be the best way to handle the issue. Now, if you'd be so kind as to get on board, I'll explain everything to you at the command post in Heimdall's central station. <laughs> now being taken away by the military after visiting the royalty, what the hell's going on for us? We're very intrinsically mixed with the upper echelons of government and everything at this point. I feel like we are just another political tool, like a political battlefield of its own weird making now. I wouldn't appreciate being played with in exactly that way. Prince Oliver, fine. The rest? Terrorists? Indeed, I'm afraid we have no choice but to define them as such. Unfortunately, we have no clue as to their aim, nor do we know the names of the group members, its size, or its history. At present, it doesn't even seem that the terrorist group has established a name for itself. Th that's a lot of unknowns. Would I be correct in assuming the man we met in the North Highlands, who was start trying to start a war as a member? Ah! So he's one of them. Hmm. He said his name was Gideon, or G, or something like that. So that's what that man you encountered in the Highlands was up to. He does sound like a terrorist type. Uh, and you think he and this group are going to try something tomorrow, on the first day of the Summer Festival? Currently operating under that assumption, yes. The summer festival lasts three days, but unlike festivals in other provinces, only the first day garners much attention. It's been a month since the incident in Nord. If they intend to make their next move soon, tomorrow is a likely time. I'd have to agree. Terrorists do love their time in the spotlight, after all. But considering how easily Gideon gave you his name, I'm betting we'll start to see them acting more openly soon. First you gather arms and other like-minded allies in secret, then you reveal yourself with a bang and keep going in quick succession. That's a typical terrorist MO. I see. And you want us to assist with countermeasures against them? Right, the RMP will be joining forces with the Heimdall military police to bolster the capital's security. Unfortunately, as big as the capital is, I can't say with complete confidence that there'll be no holes in our security. That's where you come in. You'll be assisting our security measures as a reserve force. But it should be nice if the guild was still active here. They would have come in mighty handy right about now. Yes, I don't disagree. Um, Sarah, you do know that the RMP had no involvement in the guild's withdrawal from the capital, right? Oh, really? I mean, your boss and that brother of yours could hardly make their opposition to the guild more obvious if they tried. W well... Well, these two really seem to have a messy history between them. It sure looks that way, especially where the guild is concerned. Although it sounds like your brother has been keeping busy in Crossbell recently. So what's it going to be? Whether you choose this as your field study task for tomorrow is totally up to you. If you decline, there are plenty of tasks the governor needs taken care of, like you've been doing the last two days. The summer festival is a busy time after all, lots of little details that need to be squared away. I think I speak for Group A when I say we'd be glad to join him with the anti-terrorist countermeasures. Group B feels the same. Alright then, thank you for your assistance everyone. Now let's move right along to confirming the patrol routes you'll be following. <gasps> Kitty! <laughs> Doesn't look at the champ, straight down to the cat. Pet it, pet it, pet it. They walk the opposite way of the cat? What sadists are these people?
Wow, this place sure brings back memories. Up until about a year and a half ago, I'd swing by here at least once a week. Really? I wouldn't be surprised if I'd seen you around before then. Well, I did end up getting to know your sister. Fiona, right? Works as a piano teacher? Seriously? Wait, she did say she knew someone who worked at the guild. I guess she was talking about the instructor. Still, instructor, what is it that caused the guild to withdraw from the capital? I've been wondering that for a while now myself. The guild used to be pretty active here in Airbonia, right? Oh yeah, the direct cause was guild branches all over the country being blown up, but I'm sure you already know that. The copies were Jaeger Corps hired by a nasty bunch the guild was at odds with at the time. Well, still is. But anyway, thanks to a dependable ally, we were able to defeat the Jaegers, but by then the Imperial government had its eye on us. They started making life difficult for us, took away most of the guild's authority in the country, leaving our hands tied. Eventually, the branches here started closing one by one, with no real prospect of ever reopening. So that's how it was. Hmm. Instructor. <laughs> Don't worry. Your dad might be the city's governor, but he wasn't really involved. A certain friend of his, however, was very involved. You're talking about... Chancellor Gideon Osborne, representative of the Imperial Government, I assume. Yep, him and his cronies in the Imperial Intelligence Division. It's kind of like a sister organization to the Railway Military Police. Anyway, after that, I was out of a job. That's when Principal Van Dyke came and offered me a position at the Academy. I started as a combat instructor last spring, and after that, I wound up being chosen as your class's homeroom teacher. I still help out the guild from time to time, though that's how I ended up bringing in our Jaeger princess here. Knock it off. So that's what happened. You mentioned that the Jaeger Corps was responsible for the attacks. What was his name? I wasn't the same group Fee used to run with. They were called Jester. Not a particularly high-ranking outfit. I see. Worried about me? Well, I did suspect that it was likely a different corpse. <laughs> From the sound of it, the Jaeger corpse Fee belonged to was a pretty large one, though. Oh, definitely. She was with Zephyr. Their leader was this insidious guy known as the Jaeger King. You name a combat specialty, Zephyr had it covered. They were the only corpse on par with the Red Constellation, which has its roots in the Berserkers of the Middle Ages. They caused me plenty of trouble back when I was a full-time bracer. Look who's talking. You caused us plenty of trouble yourself. It's hard to believe this all happened to people we actually know. <laughs> yeah, sounds more like a story out of some novel. Anyway, the terrorists you've been hearing about lately aren't part of any Jaeger Corps. I figured that was the case. Generally, Jaegers are interested in just two things. Money and fighting. That Gideon guy you encountered in the Nord Highlands doesn't seem to fit that description, though. If I had to guess, I'd say he's acting on some kind of deep-seated grudge. A grudge, yeah? Well, it's hard to say anything for sure. I never met him myself. What I understand, he did seem particularly tenacious. He was definitely that, which means we're go really going to have to step it up for our patrol tomorrow. Your involvement is just a precautionary step, but if you're going to help, give it your best, I say. Seems like your teamwork is smoother than ever too, so all the better. Anyway, it's late, so get your report written and get some sleep. I'm going to crash in one of the empty rooms upstairs. Ah! <sighs> the instructor never changes, does she? You sure? She seemed more talkative than usual. Feels like she was pushing herself. Now you mention it, she did seem far more forthcoming with information than usual. Maybe she's feeling a bit weird being back in her old workplace? You might be right. Still, I guess we're not really in any position to be worrying about her. We just have to do our best to coordinate with Group B tomorrow to make sure everything goes smoothly. Agreed. Alright, the sooner we get that report written, the sooner we can get some sleep. That night. I'm still alive, Spike. <laughs> I went down the wrong way. I've ruined it. <laughs> <coughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I'm sorry for the intermission there. We we're, were going forward. <laughs> uh. 
I don't know how I filled that water, but I filled that water. Let's continue. 